right away. So today we'll talk about types of bones or classification of them. So we're going to begin with flat bones or ossa plana, and then move on to irregular bones, ossa irregularia, then long bones, ossa longa, then of course short ones, ossa brevia, sesamoid ones, pneumatic ones, and if you stay till the end, you're going to get some extra info. So for these types to be easier to remember, I created this little combination of letters so you can see F is for flat bones, I is for ir irregular bones, and so on. Basically what this combination means is fills to pillar. I know that one L is missing, but it's still understandable, I hope. So fills to pillar basically means that bones are the structures or the things that help to hold up the body so that everything from skin to organs to muscles don't just fall apart. So bones are the pillars of our body. So fills the pillar, fills up the body to give it structure. Next up, we have the flat bones. They are kind of thin or, you know, the answer is in the name, they're flat. So this is what a flat bone would look like. They also expand the most in two dimensions. They are 3D, I mean, obviously, but they expand most, most in width and in length. So they can be fat, thin, or long or shorter. Also, they consist of two plates of compact, so hard bone. One of them is lamina externa, which would be on the outside, and lamina interna, which would be on the inside. And it's separated by a spongy material called diplo. It's basically like a sponge. It even looks like one, but it's not as soft. But it definitely looks like a sponge. And you can find these bones in the skull, or this would be scapula. You know where the scapula is, I hope. If you don't, definitely check out the videos in the description below. Flat bones also have some functions. I mean, what's the point of anything in the body if it doesn't have a purpose? So. The first function is protection of the main or vital organs. The best example would be skull for the brain protection. So here we have the skull. Also, we have the scapula here, which also helps protect lungs and the heart and also ribs. And the next function is to provide large areas for attachment of the muscles. So again, the scapula would be uh, the best example because a lot of large muscles do attach on the scapula. And you can see here the red lines are the ones that show where uh, the muscles would attach. Next up, we have the irregular bones. Now, these are the unpaired ones. So everything that looks weird and has a lot of different curves and, and sides to them also, ones that doesn't have a twin sister or a brother are the irregular bones. So this would be the unpaired bones in the skull. Also, pelvic bones are considered to be irregular and the vertebrae. So everything from the Atlantic one at the base of the skull to the end of the tail, all the vertebrae are unpaired ones, even though you have, you know, lumbar part and thoracic part and neck vertebrae of the spine, but still they're considered to be unpaired and irregular. Sorry, it hard, it's hard for me to pronounce this word. As I said again, they do not fit well into any other classification. So again, they're weird, very, very weird bones. And the main feature are processes. So this would be the processus transversus of the vertebrae, which are the side, like side nodes of the vertebrae. And the functions of these bones are 
they offer protection. So again, the skull, they offer support. So this would be the vertebrae. These are the thoracic ones. And here we have the lumbar ones. Again, you have the vertebrae in uh, the neck. And again, muscular attachment. So this would be pelvic bone and the big muscle attached to it. Okay, here we have the long bones. Just like with the flat bones, the answer is in the name. So the thing that they're famous for is their length. They consist of like a cylindrical shaft, which is the diaphysis or the longest part or the main part of the bone. And then they have two ends, so end epiphyses. You have the proximal one, which attaches to the body, and you have the distal end, which is distant from the rest of the body. And in between the diathesis and the epiphysis, you have the metaphysis. So think of it like the middle between parts. So diathesis, metathesis, and the end epiphysis. So everything in the thoracic limb and in the pelvic limb are mainly long bones, apart from sesamoidic ones and the bones in the joints. So everything else is long bones. As function goes for the long bones, they are, first of all, levers and aid in support so they basically help you just stand on your feet basically and not fall over so this is lever and aid and support also long bones help with locomotion so it helps the animal to stand up and lay down and next up is prehension so this is mostly for primates but it just helps to hold things so long bones are also helpful with that here we have the short bones now i like them because they are equal mostly in all dimensions but they don't have a single marrow cavity like a long bone would i didn't mention this before but long bones are special because they're filled with yellow bone marrow but short bones don't have that single cavity but they have again those like holes um, of spongy bone basically that is filled with those marrow spaces also exterior is formed by a thin layer of compact bone just like a uh, flat bone would be so short bones are like a mix of long and flat bones and they are found in those complex joints just like i mentioned before everything in those extremities in the limbs are basically long bones except for sesamoidic bones and the short bones short bones are the one that create complex joints which help you move and are the best way to absorb shock of movements and this is an x-ray of i think dog's uh, carpal joint so which is right here so again functions of the short bones they help absorb that shock of the movement the concussion of it as like this uh, beautiful horsey here that is jumping up and down. They are also, again, elements to small joints. And they help to create the ability to actually do more complex movements because the smaller the bone, the easier it is to shift and to, you know, move between places. So they help those complex movements very much. we have the sesamoid bones 
they are called that because uh, for somebody they look like a sesame seed. Um, I don't really see it. I mean, does this look like a sesame seed? I mean, not for me at least. Uh, but as you can see here, the domestic animals don't really have those shapes anymore. This is uh, sesamoidic bones. Uh, this is the proximal one of the horse. But the main thing of sesamite bones are the ability to reduce frictions along the tendons. So this is important that the tendons don't get cut by other sharp bones. Like here you can see it's kind of sharp or right here, you know, or here it's also sharp. So these bones, sesamoidic bones, help to slide tendons softly and not damage them in the process of movement. Also, they can help increase leverage or even change the direction of pull. So again, more complex and diverse movements. Again, these are kind of small bones. As I said before, the smaller the bone, the more complex movements you are able to do when you combine the bone with tendons and muscles and everything else. And you also have the patella, which is the kneecap, basically, which is the largest sesamoid bone in the body. Now you can think the human patella is kind of large. I know, I know you see your uh, knees, but just try to compare it to the horse one or even an ox one, you know, with a bull or something like that. Uh, so here we have the smaller sesamoidic bones. So this is the proximal one, again, closer to the body. And here we have the distal one, which goes right here. And here you have from a lateral perspective, again, the distal sesamoidic bone right here. And here you have the kneecap or the patella right here. are almost done with the type of bones. Here we have the pneumatic ones. The reason why they are a different type and why they are special because they contain air spaces or you can call them sinuses and they actually communicate with the atmosphere meaning that not only the works of muscles are our tendons are important, but also the atmosphere of the working of these bones. So this is what they look like from up close. This is a beautiful drawing. So you can find these in the frontal bones of the skull and also the maxillary bones. So both in top and bottom jaw or maxilla and mandibula. And these are the best examples among mammals. This is the temporal bone of the skull and you can see those beautiful air spaces, which actually makes the skull lighter, yeah? Because it would be really hard to hold up your head if every single bone in the skull would be of compact bone or, or even filled with bone marrow, right? So it needs to be hard that the skull is um, actually able to protect the brain inside of it, but it needs to be light enough so that you can actually carry your head around. And most avian bones are pneumatized as well. So this is also very important because this is one of the main reasons why birds can't fly is those air pockets in the bones. This is the last part of today's lecture. Now you need to subscribe to the channel for more of this amazing information. It's going to be worth it, I promise, today and in the future because I hope to make many more educational videos just if you help me. So I hope you subscribe. The last type of bone is the special ones. And just like some people, some animals and some bones apparently do not fit well into any category. So they need to have a special one. <laughs> and this is because first, 
they look differently, which means their anatomical presence is different. Two, their function is special. And three, they don't belong to the main mechanism of motion, which means that without these bones, the main movement of the body or of the animal would be just fine without these bones, but some other functions of the body would not be the same without these bones. So, these special bones consist of os penis, os cordis, which is actually very, very interesting. Uh, ruminants, I mean, mostly cows, have these bones uh, in the heart. It's, it's amazing, you can actually see it. Uh, I mean, if you would have the heart and cut it in the middle, you can actually see the bone, so it's amazing. So I will cover this bone in the future, but for now, just enjoy this beautiful view of Osa Cordes. So this is it for today. Here we have just the literature and other sources. As you can see, we do have a bunch of them. The main ones are in the top, the top four ones, and the rest are pictures I use for this lecture. I will put everything down below. If you want to use the same ones for your presentations, everything here is amazing, and I'm really glad that I get to use this, but these are not mine. So again, everything in the description below. Thank you for watching and I hope you liked this lecture. Subscribe and comment below what you want to see next.